All right, Patriots. Um, once again, sorry my face cams off. We're still on lockdown, and I don't want you looking at the top of my head. <laughs> I'll turn that back on if they uh, remove the lockdown. Actually, when I cut the video, they came by and checked my room, and they didn't see me behind my computer screen. So it's all good. Okay, they just said locks lights out of sight, right? I am out of sight. Okay, so Venn diagrams. Um, these are going to be those old school things you did back in the day where you had, you know, the two circles overlapping or even the, the, the three circles overlapping. We're not going to get into any three circles today. Everything we do is just two circles. But I wanted to start framing how this can be helpful, especially when you're looking at probabilities of unrelated events. Now, for example, sometimes you get, you, you start talking about like lots, lots of strange concepts that don't seem to make sense. Like for example, what's the probability of somebody being both a cat owner and liking pizza pockets? Well, those two are completely different things. Um, but bizarrely enough, yes, I, I worked at a um, um, at a software company where I was developing um, software for convenience stores. And you did start seeing all of these bizarre correlations like that, that the convenience store owners and especially their marketing teams were interested in. Um, they wanted to see what's the correlation of people buying particular items together. Like for example, the one that was really, really intriguing was what are the probability of somebody coming in and buying beer and something else because beer is the highest seller at a convenience store, one of their highest grossing items. So if they can figure out you know, what people commonly buy alongside beer, then if you put that display right next to the beer case, you're more likely to increase your sales of that things or of that, of that secondary item. It's called cross-selling, um, also called affinity sales. Um, the most bizarre one that we found was ironically that people who bought beer also had a very high probability of buying both diapers and feminine products. Now, the, the, the psychology behind that, we actually hired a psychologist to figure this out. That makes no sense at all. Um, what it was is that is that um, wife, mama, whoever, would ask the husband to go down and buy a pack of diapers or go buy a pack of tampons for her. And in order to, to save face, he would walk in, walk over to the aisle, spend a long time looking at whatever beer he was going to pick out pick out the correct the beer that he wants and he'd scoop by pick up the box of the other stuff walk up bite as fast as he could and walk out we called that the man card item <laughs> but um, um so you know all these weird weird things of unrelated items coming together actually does have a lot of reward application and i spent a lot of time working on those things i used venn diagrams all the time in my job at pdi so let's take a simple example here and then from this example we're going to create our our venn diagram and then start coming up with probabilities based on that so um, I gave a survey to seniors at EVHS. Um, by the way, this is a fictitious survey. I didn't actually do this. I made it up for the point of this example. Um, students were asked if they took math and art classes. And I drew out all of my people. I've got my boys up here, my girls down here, and told you whether or not they were in math, art, both, or neither. So let's go through and calculate up or find out how many of these 20 students took math. Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 people took math. Now, art, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 people taking art. Now, but what about the both? This guy is taking both. This girl, these two are taking both. And this girl is taking both. So we've got one, two, three, four of them taking both classes. And, you know, seniors of off period sometimes looks like this girl and this girl have no math or art. So we've got two that fit into that category. Okay. Now, we're going to draw a Venn diagram based on all of this information. Um, now, here's what we have to keep in mind. First off, traditionally when we drew Venn diagrams, we do stuff like this. Um, now, we're going to be putting a box around it. This box is called, depending on what um, on a kind of what school of thought they come from, it's called either a space or a universe. I prefer space over universe, sample space S, because universe just seems too broad to me, but I just want to let you know that that is in the lingo there somewhere. 
This is going to encompass everybody that I'm talking about in this particular survey. So this entire space should encompass all 20 of these people. When I'm done, I should have exactly 20 people inside of this box. So we're going to create a box for math, sorry, a circle for math, and a circle for art. This one is math, this one is art. Now the key to making these is that you want to always do the overlap first. So I've got four people, remember these four, like this one, that were in both of them. So I've got four that are involved in both math and art classes. Now I can go through and see how many I need over in each individual circle. So over here in the math only section, I've got 11 that took math, but four of those were in both. Well then, the 11 minus four leaves me with seven who are in math only. Now I could go and check that and see math only is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that worked out. Now my art people, I had 10 total, but four were taking both. So I've got six over here for art, art only. Now let's check that out. One, two, three, four, five, six. That worked out. But now whenever I add all these up, I've got six plus four is 10 plus seven is 17. And did I add something wrong? You know what I did? Let's go back and fix this. I had one, two, three girls. I'm sorry, three girls that had the off periods. Now, which actually works out for this because I have 17 people inside of here, then I've got three on the outside that don't fit into either the math or the art category or the both. Now, whenever I start looking at these regions, this area on the outside, outside the circles, hey, my lights went off. Um, the area outside the circles, let's fix this, is people who didn't have anything. Inside of this region here is math only. Over here to the right is art only. In the middle we have both math and art. So now let's start doing probabilities based on this. So let's talk about the probability of a student taking math and art. Remember, it's probability of the event. So how many people do I have taking math and art? Well, that's this central region here, which is four out of 20. Now let's do the probability of math only. Well, that's my seven out of 20. How about my probability of art only? Well, that one gives me my six out of 20. Let's zoom out a little bit here. And then my probability of neither or none, and that's my three out of 20. Now, let's go ahead and take our calculator and simplify these. Zoom in. Man, it sure take a long time for to clear a lockdown. Okay. All right. So four divided by 20 comes out to 0.2 times 100 is 20%. Seven divided by 20 is 0.35, which is 35%. Six divided by 20 is 0.3, which is 30%, and three divided by 20 is 0.15, which is 15%. Now let's add all those together just to make sure that we have 100. 20 plus 35 plus 30 plus 15, sure enough came out to exactly 100%. Now. The reason that this Venn diagram method of finding probabilities has so much power is because it's also applicable, I'm not gonna do it right now, but it's also applicable when we start doing the triples. 
where you have the intersection, the overlap of all three, or the twos, or the ones, or the nuns. Um, so we could do those as well, and it helps me come up with all my probabilities very, very easily. What we're going to be doing at a later time in this unit is actually showing you how to mathematically calculate this stuff, because sometimes you have more than two events. Um, that are going to overlap. So here with two events, this Venn diagram makes sense. With three three events, it could possibly happen, but it's a lot more complicated. You don't even want to see what the picture looks like for four. Um, so we have to be able to come up with those mathematically, and being able to do this will help us check it later on. So at this point, we're done with the, done with, um, the lesson. Hopefully you've got down everything I, I wrote down. On the board, there is um, examples of different um, um, things that I've done with my other classes. Um, hope that's helpful, but you're going to pass it out front and back. Um, uh, get the assignment done, do it at the end of class.